tested him throughout the course of time. So many still reach out to him with broken hearts and minds. And every one of them will say, without exception, that they find Jesus never fails. Even in the days of old, he brought his people through. And then he came to show his love and die for me and you. And he rose again to prove that every story had been true. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Jesus never You cannot prevail because Jesus never fails. Sometimes this world brings trouble I find so hard to bear. I know I could not make it without Jesus being there. It's so encouraging to Jesus never fails. So what can I do to prove to you? Tell me how can you deny? No one told facts, no mysteries. It's all so cut and dry. On the witness stand of your life, I'll be the first to testify that Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. You might as well get thee behind me, Satan. You cannot prevail because Jesus never Jesus never fails. He never fails. Jesus never In 1959, just six short years after the Korean War had concluded, a young, intelligent university student with strong leadership ability named Daniel Kim was studying political science with a dream to become a diplomat for his country of South Korea. In December of that year, a devastating fire burned the Kim's home, completely destroying it and all of their possessions. Little did Daniel Kim know that God would use this tragedy to set a completely new direction for the rest of his life. A kind-hearted Baptist missionary from Missouri named Jack Baskin heard of the fire and brought some clothing and supplies to the devastated family. The following day, Daniel's mother told him to pay a visit to missionary Baskin 
to thank him for his kindness. Daniel went to the church that Brother Baskin had started on a Wednesday evening and heard Brother Baskin preach. For the first time in his life, Daniel Kim realized he was a sinner. He left that night unsaved, but under conviction. He came back the following Sunday evening to hear Brother Baskin preach, By grace are ye saved. That night, Daniel Kim understood and accepted the gospel, and by grace, he was saved. Brother Baskin immediately began to mentor and disciple Daniel Kim, involving him in every aspect of ministry and soul winning. In 1960, while out visiting for a new church they were preparing to start, Brother Kim sensed the call of God on his life to become a preacher. He and Brother Baskin stopped beside a mountain path under a pine tree and prayed. Thus, Daniel Kim, this well-educated, caring young man, began a lifelong ministry of service to Christ. In 1961, Brother Kim, along with Brother Baskin, started the Bible Baptist Church of Bo Kwang Dong, Korea, a church that remains as one of the largest Baptist churches in the country of Korea, still pastored today by Dr. Daniel Kim. Dr. Daniel Kim has served Christ now for more than 60 years. He has preached in 350 different churches in more than 30 countries, sharing Christ and challenging Christians to be involved in the work of the Great Commission. Through his ministry, Dr. Kim has been involved directly and indirectly in the planting of more than 200 churches. Under his leadership, Bo Kwang Dong Bible Baptist Church has sent 13 missionaries to countries around the world. Dr. Kim's daily radio ministry is the longest running radio program in the country of Korea. The church currently supports more than 60 missionaries and gives more than $400,000 annually to worldwide evangelization. Join me in welcoming Dr. Daniel Kim to Lancaster Baptist Church. I first met Dr. Kim when I was five years old. He came to the States to preach in some churches, and uh, he has been such a strong influence in my life ever since that time. He told me many years ago, he said, uh, I pray for you every day. And I said, I said uh, that, that's too much. It's, it's okay. He said, how can I tell you I love you and not pray for you? And I often wonder if it's not the prayers of men like this that have buoyed our ministry up over the years. Dr. Kim has, for 62 years, pastored the same church through various challenges and trials. He's been a faithful man of God. The Lord has used him in the life of our church. He first preached when we had just a few hundred folks here and has been used of God throughout the 1040 window to influence pastors to reach souls and disciple them and start churches. He has worked with great men of God, translating and helping with great meetings, Dr. G.B. Vick, uh, Dr. Jerry Falwell, so many names of men that have called Dr. Kim for large crusades with tens of thousands of people being saved. And uh, I'm so thankful that when our family, when my parents went to Korea as missionaries, that Dr. and Mrs. Kim were there at the airport to welcome us and to bring us to their home and, and to love a young teenage boy that didn't really know what was going on in life. And he's never stopped loving me. And I say to our church family often, any friend of your pastor's is a friend of yours. And this is our friend to bring our first message tonight. Dr. Kim, we know that your children are here in the States, most of them, and you'll be having some time with them. Uh, next week, and we wanted to give a little gift to you to help you enjoy your time with your family. Thank you for being with our family tonight. Once again, welcome Dr. Kim as he comes to preach.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Young Sun and I bring greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ from Bulgwangdong Bible Baptist Church, Seoul, Korea. It is an hour and joy for me to be in this great church, Lancaster Baptist Church, and West Coast Baptist College in participation in the Spiritual Leadership Conference. When God does his great work, he always uses a man of God. God has been using Dr. Chapel in the mighty way to build this great church, to carry out great commission and train young men, women for the Lord's work, planting churches, soul winning, the world missions. Thank you, Dr. Chapel, for having me participate in this spiritual leadership conference. I love you. And your family, the church family, and also my family, you know, Grace, Helena, Davi, Timmy, and also my, our youngest child, daughter, Una, from the Virginia to, to be here. It is interesting to investigate the very last words of the famous people because those words are the response to their lives and the works they have done, evaluating what was important to them. The great British naval commander, Lord Nelson said, thank God I have done my duty. And Admiral Yi Sun Shin, who defended my own country, from the other country, left the famous saying, those who are willing to die will live, and those who are willing to live will die. Fire Lieutenant Sobongil of Busan Kumjong Fire Station, we died at the scene of the rescue and said, if there is only one percent percentage of a possibility to rescue a life, I must not abandon hope. Amen. The greatest of the last words can be found in the very last letter. Apostle Paul wrote and sent from the Roman dungeon to his beloved son in faith, Timothy, who was pastoring, ministering in Ephesus. Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 6, 7, 8. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is a laid up for me, for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Paul wrote these words to his beloved son and co-laborer in the Lord, Timothy, Timothy, 
while waiting for the execution of his death sentence. But he wrote this letter with a firm assurance rather than fear and or anxiety. We can sense the quiet boldness in his words. He was facing death, but he was not intimidated by it. He knew that his ministry was coming to an end, but he was not discouraged. In his letter, we see both serenity and courage. And in the chapter declaring his face, Pastor Paul looked into his life and witnessed his assurance of faith to the Lord in three directions. Paul examines his life and witnessed for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. Pastor Paul's attitude facing death is extraordinary. Pastor Paul's attitude facing death is not extraordinary. He did not consider himself as a prisoner waiting for the execution, but as a drink offering being offered for the glory of the Lord. His life is not being taken away from him, but is the rather being offered to God. The Lord Jesus gave his life for Paul. So the great apostle also gave his life for the Lord. In his declaration, our text today, Paul does not use the word death, but use different expressions. It's not because of his fear of death. For Christians, there is no death as the world generally understands. The expression of Paul used instead of which is my departure is a beautiful Greek word. It means soldiers strike their tents and move into different locations when their camp is under attack. Paul considered himself as a soldier of God, dwelling in tent, a body of which is to die. That's only means our earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse one. And we are moving to the building of God. Glorious new house in the heaven. We are living what binds us. Our earthly body is a dwelling place just for a while. And when the Lord calls us, call us home, we'll get glorious and eternal house which will last forever. Also he, the word departure, means to set sail. When a Christian dies and he united uh, uh, his, he, 
entice the rope from the anchorage of this world and sets sail toward heaven, the eternal harbor. Paul understood death as a being freed from what was binding him. Jail is not his eternal home. His small boat would leave the anchorage, arrive at the harbor in the heavens, and finally meet the Lord Jesus Christ in face to face. Are you ready to examine your life as confidence and to be given to God as an offering? If you trust Jesus Christ as a savior, you will be read at once and nothing will intimidate you. At the end of his life, Paul not only exempts his life, but he also looks back on his life. He looks back on his life, said, I have fought good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Because Paul believed in Jesus Christ, he was able to finish his life without fear and not regret, regret looking back on his life. Many people tried not to look back. It is true that there, there are wrong ways of looking back. Looking back on the past sins, failures, and defeats is the wrong way of looking back. There is yet one more failure. But when you're looking back, remembering where you've been, you have been, and what the Lord has done for us and in us is good retrospection. When the Paul looked back on his life, he could see his life was not easy. He had a fight to fight. A race to the run and the stewardship to fulfill. Wherever he was, in every city, in uh, every city he went, he battled with the world and the body and the devil. And now in Rome, he was in final battle. Sometimes he would have felt he would lose, he would lose, yet the, the Lord led him. He could say, I have fought a good fight. He could confess, I have finished my Course. It was the great hope he had. But none of the things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with a joy and the ministry of which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Each one of us has a course to finish. God has a work and a place for each and every one of us. 
our time is God's hand. For some, God gave you a relatively short time to do their assigned works. For, for some, gave a longer years. Stephen died young. Paul was granted a much longer life. But our lives should not be counted only by the numbers of years. Rather, the death and the strength of our lives would decide the significance of our time on the earth. Paul would have known that he was finishing his course and getting nearer to meeting the Lord at the end of his earthly life. Paul confessed, I have kept the faith. In the time of the Paul, there were those who confessed to be Christians but abandoned their faith. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to the seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils. Here he, the faith is to honestly come content for the faith which was also delivered unto the saints, Jude 1, 3. In other words, it is a system of a saving truth which Jesus Christ paid for with his life and a total trust, saving truth recorded in the word of God. As a good steward, Paul God the, the faith on many better grounds. He planted, he invested his faith in the lives of so many people. And now he's about to disappear from this sin. For a moment, please look back. Have you fought a good fight? Are you a winner or a loser? We should be the more than conquerors through him. Are you fighting you better? Or are you victim of a disaster? Have you finished your course? Have you fulfilled the God's will from your heart? Have you kept the faith? Have you been true to the teaching of God's word? Or have you quit on the way to the Demas did. Paul had no fear as he faced the death approaching. He certainly had no regrets looking back on his life. I pray you and I would do the would do same. I have a foot a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. 
when he looks to the, in the future. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to, unto all them also that love his appearance. When people face the last day of their lives, they tend to be afraid of things to come. It's because there is a warning in the Bible. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this judgment. However, Paul was not intimidated by his future. He knew very well what was going to take place. He would meet the Lord and be given crown, a crown from him. Amen. The peace we have within that our future is guaranteed cannot be found elsewhere. No matter how great the Lord and justice of did the Roman Empire, Paul's face was not in them. Paul had many good friends, but he did not base his face upon those people. And his face was not in himself. He had a faith in the Lord, believing and trusting him. He had no regrets looking back on his life. He examined his life, had no fear. And he was not worried and anxious. He trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the history of a Roman, Roman Empire, Paul was recorded as a prisoner. But in the book of the life of the Lamb, his name is recorded as a child of God. Amen. The Lord will say, to him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. He had such a confidence for his future because there is a laid up a crown of righteousness for him. You and I will have to finish our lives in this world. When no one of these days, but none of us know when that day will, that day and hour will be. For some, that day would come sooner than they thought. The homebound road can find us unexpectedly. Or maybe we can spend some time to reflect on the, our lives as Paul did in Roman jail. Just as Apostle Paul made clear to his last letter, 
I hope we can also look at our lives from three, di three different points of view and give the same testimony. Are you now ready to give yourself as an offering? We need wisdom to honestly examine how we have lived in the past. Do you have assurance about your future? And give your heart and your life completely to the Lord. Have a faith in Him. Be faithful to Him. In whatever we do, let us give glory to Him to be pleasing to God and earning His acknowledgement. That is what counts rather than the praise of man. And then let us live of the inspiration to this world. William Borden, you know him very well. You read about him. Well, who we had a graduate uh, prestigious college and refused the great fortune he could have inherited from his father. While he was on the way to the mission field, he was taken with malaria and ended his brief life. In the last inside the couple page of his Bible, he left this words. No regret. We are me upset in Korea. No reserve. Nangim upset. No retreat, oops. Do you have a face in the Lord Jesus Christ for Easter? Reason to live this kind of life? Do you love him and have a desire to obey him? These are the questions you need to ask yourself. The life of, of obedience is what makes us God's core laborers. It gives us testimony of our faith and it helps us to become channels the blessings, God's blessings for others. For I am not ashamed of Christ. Thank you. I want to have our heads bowed and our eyes closed. You just heard from a man in his 80s who's pastored for 62 years talking to us about the calling of God is unto death. Some of you church members and some of you pastors, you're always looking for the greener pasture. You're always looking for the way out. Here's a man who has said tonight from 2 Timothy, he wants to stay in until God calls him home. I think you understood the message. If God has called us, 
then we must be faithful. I'm going to ask the piano to play. If the Lord spoke to your heart, let's take some time right now and pray with the Lord, shall we? You come. The altar is open if you'd like to come. I believe God's already spoken to some hearts tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the testimony of Dr. Kim tonight. We thank you for the teachings of your holy word. And Lord, I believe most every person in this room is here because they want to keep the faith. They want to fight that good fight. They want to finish the course. And I pray that you would help many of us tonight to make decisions that will be finishing decisions and steadfast decisions and decisions that would keep us in the race. And Lord, thank you for men like Dr. Kim and others here tonight who are showing us how and teaching us how. Bless them and help us, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen.